Hey, Heart Room friends. I'm so excited to introduce you to a new story today that we're going to read. It's a chapter book called Little House in the Big Woods by Laura Ingalls Wilder. And this is an autobiographical story. So what that means is that it's a story that was written about the author's life. Um, she's using memories from her childhood to write her story today. This book um, is based on Laura Ingalls Wilder's memory of growing up in the big woods at a cabin that she grew up with with her family uh, near Pepin, Wisconsin. And it was in the 1870s. That's when the story takes place over 150 years ago. So we're going to get to learn a lot about what life was like 150 years ago. Here we go. Little House in the Big Woods. Chapter 1, Little House in the Big Woods. Once upon a time, 60 years ago, a little girl lived in the big woods of Wisconsin in a little gray house made of logs. The great dark trees of the big woods stood all around the house, and beyond them were other trees, and beyond them were more trees. As far as a man could go to the north in a day or a week or a whole month, there was nothing but woods. There were no houses. I'm going to show you the picture cute. And there's her family. There were no roads. There were no people. There were only trees and the wild animals who had their homes among them. Wolves lived in the big woods and bears and huge wild cats. Muskrats and mink and otter lived by the streams. Foxes had dens in the hills and deer roamed everywhere. To the east of the little log house and to the west, there were miles upon miles of trees, and only a few little log houses scattered far apart in the edge of the big woods. So far as the little girl could see, there was only the one little house where she lived with her father and mother, her sister Mary, and her baby sister Carrie. A wagon track ran before the house, turning and twisting out of sight in the woods where the wild animals lived. But the little girl did not know where it went, nor what might be at the end of it. The little girl was named Laura, and she called her father Pa and her mother Ma. In those days and in that place, children did not say father and mother, nor mama and papa, as they do now. At night, when Laura lay awake in the trundle bed, she listened and could not hear anything at all but the sound of the trees whispering together. Sometimes far away in the night, a wolf howled. Then he came nearer and howled again. It was a scary sound. Laura knew that wolves would eat little girls, but she was safe inside the solid log walls. Her father's gun hung over the door, and good old Jack the Brindle Bulldog lay on guard before it. Her father would say, Go to sleep, Laura. Jack won't let the wolves in. So Laura snuggled under the covers of the trundle bed close beside Mary and went to sleep. One night, her father picked her up out of bed and carried her to the window so that she might see the wolves. There were two of them sitting in the front of the house. They looked like shaggy dogs. They pointed their noses at the big bright moon and howled. Jack paced up and down before the door growling. The hair stood up along his back and he showed his sharp fierce teeth to the wolves. They howled but they could not get in. The house was a comfortable house. Upstairs there was a large attic pleasant to play in when the rain drummed on the roof. Downstairs was the small bedroom and the big room. The bedroom had a window that closed with a wooden shutter. The big room had two windows with glass in the panes, and it had two doors, a front door and a back door. All around the house was a crooked rail fence to keep the bears and deer away. In the yard in the front of the house were two beautiful big oak trees. Every morning, as soon as she was awake, Laura ran to look out the window, and one morning she saw in each of the big trees a dead deer hanging from a branch. Pa had shot the deer the day before, and Laura had been asleep when he brought them home at night and hung them high in the trees so the wolves could not get the meat. That day, Pa and Ma and Laura and Mary had fresh venison for dinner. It was so good that Laura wished that they could eat it all but most of the meat must be salted and smoked and packed away to be eaten in the winter. We're going to pause there and we'll read some more tomorrow.